Hi, this is just going to be a quick follow-up on this um, Samsung Plasma TV because I wanted to uh, test a few more things, didn't have enough time last time, so we'll check this sucker out, shall we? See if we can at least uh, get an external uh, signal working. So let's give it a go. Now, the problem last time was that uh, none of the um, analogy type inputs worked at all. The uh, component video didn't work, the S video didn't work, the VGA didn't work, and um, but I didn't try the HDMI, so I'm going to try the HDMI and uh, now, and also a lot of people suggested it might be something incredibly simple that was just due to the blue screen mode that I had turned on, so we'll disable that and we'll give it a go. Now, uh, I've got the thing uh, plugged in now. Now, this one this board is uh, completely safe to touch because it is um, isolated from the mains supply. And you'll notice that uh, they have a high voltage uh, warning sticker up here. That is for the rest of all of the circuitry which we saw last time under there. That's all the high voltage stuff. You do not want to uh, go poking around in that. But all this, uh, all you know, low voltage, uh, three and a half volt, uh, five volt stuff, all mains isolated so it's completely safe so that's why they have the warning sticker on this part and then a separate removable panel on here it just allows um, servicing and repair on just the um, completely safe side of the thing that's just a little uh, safety aside there now I've got this thing uh, turned on and it is actually uh, powered up and if I do the old back of the finger test I mean that chip there is getting quite warm let's uh, zoom in on that this is the old back of the finger test. This one is yo, hot, hot, burny, burny, burny. Whoa. Um, that's the uh, one, the main um, Samsung BGA uh, part there. That's just the memory there. Um, that's another some sort of video process. A little bit warm. That's the uh, HDMI panel link. That's doing nothing. It's a little bit warm. This one's here. Not a problem. So we're just searching for any parts that are particularly hot. Now this one, um, a few people commented that uh, it looked like it may have been burnt out. Um, so we'll take a, a closer look at that um, under the uh, Times 10 macro lens. But it's it's warm, so it's powered up. But uh, you know, it's certainly not. Yeah, it's getting warmer, warmer, warmer. So I don't know if that's uh, normal for that device. We we'll have to check the data sheet. And uh, oh, that one's that one's pretty hot. Geez, we'll have to uh, check out what that one is, and the others, not really a problem. So let's take a close-up look at that one. As I noted in the previous video, it seems to be the decoder for all of the analog uh, inputs down here, the component, the S-Video, the RGB, and all that sort of stuff, because um, all of these uh, AC um, coupling caps down here, and you can just see all the traces flow from there into there, and possibly this uh, chipset down here as well, but that one we're interested in. So let's take a look at the data sheet for that one. I couldn't get the uh, precise um, Philips data sheet, but I did get a uh, second source one here from uh, Trident uh, Semiconductor, and no surprises, it's a 10-bit video decoder with a comb filter and uh, component video for studio quality ADC 16 analog inputs. And, and I can uh, link this in to the uh, notes down in there, but it's, you know, it's got all sorts of, uh, it's got the composite video input, it's got the um, RGB inputs, it's got the component uh, inputs, and everything you'd expect, all that, all those inputs which aren't working. So it's, you know, a, a fair guess that that chip, that there's something wrong with that chip in there, because we know that all the video processing around here all works, because it's driving the panel just fine, so uh, rather than troubleshoot that right now, first thing I'm going to do is by essentially bypass uh, that chip by not using the analog inputs, but using the digital um, HDMI input that'll go through the separate um, uh, HDMI uh, processor here and uh, presumably, uh, you know, directly into the processor up there. So let's plug in HDMI, see if it works. All right, here we go. Plugged it into my notebook down here before HDMI. And uh, as before, we've got that blue screen. We'll switch that off in a minute. But uh, let's change our source down here. You ready? Ta-da! <laughs> there you go. 
it works a treat. As expected, HDMI works fine. Now we'll still ch uh, check that uh, blue screen thing to make sure that's not an issue, but there we go, we bypassed that uh, video, um, analog video decoder chip and went uh, straight through the HDMI and that is perfect. I mean, there's no um, dead pixels, there's nothing. It doesn't quite go right to the edge uh, down there, but that, that is beautiful. That works just fine. I love it. Let's uh, play a video on, on here, see if the audio and everything works. Ta-da! There you go. Working a treat. And the audios, as you can hear, is coming through the TV no problems. Beautiful. We have a winner, folks. Check it out. give you a lower noise floor. And it can really work out quite well. And I might show an example of that. But I just thought that I'd show an example here Okay, I've turned off the blue screen mode, and no, the PC input does not work, and yes, I've set it to the lowest resolution possible, 800 by 600. If it can't do that, seriously, it does not work, so the VGA input is definitely cactus. But, folks, woohoo, check this out, I am getting something on the composite video input now. I've got one of these uh, VGA to uh, composite converter box boxes which is generating the uh, color bars there but it's um it's flickering check that out so i don't know whether or not that's normal i haven't uh, used this uh box before but um it yeah i don't know whether or not that's the tv or the box outputting something but i can't seem to make it um you know uh, stable or anything like that so i don't know if that's a fault with the tv or the uh generator box no blue screen mode's on so there you go i'm so it wasn't that, so I'm not sure why it suddenly decided to work. This is the same box I was using yesterday to uh, test this thing. So I don't know what the deal is there, but composite is working. So that means that chipset is actually processing something at the very least. I mean, it can't do that. There's a lot of complexity uh, involved in doing that. It's not like uh, I don't think uh, part of the chip's going to fail with the VGA input. So not entirely sure what the issue is and what do you know it does actually work a treat so that was that box generating a non-compatible uh, composite signal in some way I've got it now hooked up to a uh, old uh, DVD player with the composite output and uh, it's working a treat so I don't know why that wasn't working the other day the thing has suddenly decided to work did I actually press on the chip or do something uh, weird like that. It is one of those um, BGA chips. So, you know, I presumably, um, I can only uh, think that I did actually make the chip come good. Maybe it does have a uh, dry joint on one of the balls underneath the BGA or something like that. Maybe we can try some freezer spray. So what I'm going to do now is freeze this uh, BGA chip to see if it does anything. Don't have any freezer spray here in the lab, but the next best thing air duster you've seen this before just turn it upside down instant cold freezer spray let's go let's see if i can get in here and here we go i'm going to hit that bga chip let's see what happens no the chip's going all frosty we've got frosty the snowman on that bga chip and it's holding in just fine not a problem and if you want to have a look, it's still cold. Here we go. Oh no, it was. <laughs> it was cold for a second there. But uh, this is what it looks like when you freeze it. You get all the frost on the chip, like that. And uh, there you go. It's nice and cold, and it's still working. And just to show you that uh, blue screen mode, you can see there's no signal. It's turned off disconnected it's got the blue screen uh, there and you switch it on and it just automatically should hello there we go automatically uh, switch there you go look we've got some check check that out that is not a clean signal anymore so what's going on there it was before you saw it before it was absolutely perfect now we've got this color there's some sort of color tearing across there. I'm not sure what the correct term for that is, but you can see it. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, you can definitely see that on the screen. There's that color tearing on the display across here and 
down here as well. So I'm not... There's, there's, there is something wrong with this thing, but it seems intermittent. So at least we got the thing uh, going. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe I'll hit it with some more uh, freezer spray and uh, see what happens. No. Let's try in the general vicinity. Like the electrolytic taps and... Uh, Stuff like that. No, no, it's still got some tearing on there. So there you go. That is very interesting. If you've got any good ideas about what's possibly going on there, then uh, oh, oh, no. See, it was good there for a second, and then it, and then it's doing it again. So if you've got any idea what's going on there, I mean, chip. Clearly, the uh, decoder chipset is working just fine because you wouldn't get that. Um, unless, you know, as I said, you can't get like a partial fire on that chip or anything like that. That's, you know, that's really not um, feasible at all. So, whew, your guess is as good as mine. So this is one sick puppy here. Let's plug the HDMI back in. And uh, it, does it auto detect? No, it doesn't auto detect, but I can uh, switch the source there. And there we go. Nothing wrong with the HDMI, so um, yeah, I don't know. Something's intermittent on this sucker, and uh, but the HDMI works fine, which makes this a very still a very usable set. I mean, you use. I mean, ideally, you want to be using the HDMI input uh, for the best uh, quality anyway. So it's a winner as far as that works. The audio and video, absolutely first class for this what eight-year-old uh, plasma display, two thousand and five. Uh, model and um, which according to uh, <laughs> uh, people complaining on the web this particular model has very high failure rate uh, and was uh, very expensive uh, to repair after the warranty period which presumably was like uh, 12 months for your standard warranty unless you got one of those extended warranty things and no the component video is not working either I'm generating my component signal it's actually detecting that there's a component input there and it's uh, enabling that particular channel when you cycle through the source here but um, I've got a uh, component uh, device which is generating component out and uh, zip. Now there are a few people who suggested that uh, this uh, Philips SAA7119 uh, video decoder chip looked a bit uh, burnt or something like that. It had some physical uh, damage, and I've got to admit, I can actually see sort of the shape of the die um, underneath it, but it doesn't get that uh, hot, and of course it's uh, working as we uh, saw. It's at least doing something. So there's certainly no uh, physical damage to the chip, and it, yeah, it does look a bit sort of, you know, thermally stressed, I guess you could say, but I think that's just a uh, natural part of the... Uh, this particular package anyway so I mean clearly there's uh, nothing uh, physically wrong with it because it does actually work. Now Trevor from the uh, television mag forum he uh, commented that I should probably do a um, service uh, factory reset mode in the uh, service menu on this thing but I don't have the uh, service cable that plugs in the back of it couldn't be bothered making one up don't know how it works um, and from what I'm reading uh, you can enter the service mode via the remote control so um, I don't have a remote for it, so um, I, I will probably go out and get a remote now because it uh, does seem to work. It seems to be useful, at least uh, certainly in the uh, HDMI mode, not a problem. So um, if you've got any ideas what's actually going on with this sucker, I'm sure it's something to do with that uh, chipset, that uh, main decoder chipset, but the freezer spray didn't seem to do anything. A bit surprised by that. Um, I expected uh, something to happen there, I guess. There was a good uh, chance of that, but... I don't know. Um, I need a remote to um, enter, do the factory reset. Maybe that'll help. Maybe there's nothing physically hardware wrong with it. Maybe it just needs a factory uh, reset. You know, the I squared C codes go into that uh, decoder chip or something to reset it. Eh, who knows? Anyway, um, I think it's an absolute winner. Beauty. I'm going to. Uh, oh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it because I don't have a stand, so I can't just take it home and whack it in the lounge room and replace my other one so um, it's either uh, try and get a stand for it or uh, mount it on a wall uh, somewhere you could even mount on the wall here in the lab perhaps um well that bloody thing weighs 50 kilos so mounting it on one of these chip rock walls ugh, I don't know 
And I've had a few people comment, do I always have bare feet around the lab? Do I always work in bare feet? Yeah, pretty much. It's much more comfortable. But occasionally I do wear Australian safety boots. Pair of thongs. Beauty.